Welcome to the presentation of our paper, A Fall Tree Approach Focusing on Electromagnetic Interference. In this paper, we show an approach how EMC can be treated in conjunction with functional safety by addressing the development of safety systems for the design of ICs for automotive applications. At first, we provide an overview of the most important principles that must be taken into account when considering these two topics together. Then we discuss problems of characterizing the electromagnetic environment. And finally, we show a fall tree approach based on an example. The ISO 26262 mentions EMC several times, which shows the importance of this topic, but does not directly examine the topic. The functional safety standard rather refers to the corresponding EMC safety standards. EMC and functional safety are too important to be handled separately. Due to the fact that hardware can fail, also functions are acknowledged not to be without a fail. To be on the safe side, the accepted probability of failing is limited depending on the assigned automotive safety integrity level, the ACIL level. To be on the safe side, engineers have to take care to achieve those limits or rates. For ACIL D, which is the highest safety level, ISO 26262 claims a failure rate of less than 10 to the power of minus 8 per hour. In other words, 10 fits. In general, failure in time fit rates are determined for all functions and failure modes except of the failure mode caused by EMI. Sources of electromagnetic emissions are usually considered under the worst case assumption, as if it were always present. Interferences that lead to failures of the system are therefore treated as systematic errors. In a probabilistic view, such systematic faults have a probability of 1. If an IC fails to meet the required test levels, countermeasures such as, for example, adding additional protection or filter components must be taken until the required EMC test values are achieved. This must be done for both safety-related and non-safety-related functions. This qualitative view of EMC is a generally valid approach, but it can lead to over-engineering, as additional components are sometimes not needed at all, as the actual interference levels are often not that high in practice. At the first glance, it looks like more components imply higher safety, but we should be aware that each additional component can also cause a system failure and may thus reduce the overall safety of our product. For example, an additional bypass capacitor has a certain probability of breaking and thereby causing a short circuit, which may result in a violation of the alpha safety target. If we consider an electronic system in a vehicle as an example, we can determine various potential sources of interferences for an electronic system. From the original equipment manufacturer's point of view, the environment outside the vehicle is an uncontrolled electromagnetic environment in which the function of electronic systems in the vehicle can be affected by a variety of possible interference signals such as those from mobile radio broadcasting systems or CB radio transmission. All those disturbance sources like radio stations are stationary and permanently present and therefore have to be considered as systematic. Also inside the vehicle, several electrical and electronic systems are operating. All of them contribute to or generate the inner EM environment. Disturbances generated by those systems are strongly limited and usually known. The permissible electromagnetic emissions that electronic control units can generate are generally strictly regulated and the emission levels of the control units are usually very low. 
The same applies to individual ICs used in the control units. For example, the emissions of integrated circuits measured by the 150 ohm measurement are usually in the range of a few tenths of dB microvolts. Only in the event of faults, for example, if a capacitor is broken and causes a short circuit, the system also tends to generate high emissions. The emission in the case is therefore related to faults leading to failure modes and not to normal operation. Only a small subset of all possible system failure modes tend to generate high emission. If, for example, a control unit stops working, the generated emission can even go down. In this figure, we have sketched the probability of the electromagnetic disturbance in an automotive application. It presents the distinction of the electromagnetic environment between the systematic electromagnetic environment and the electromagnetic environment due to faults. It shows that low amplitude electromagnetic disturbances are more likely than very high amplitude disturbances. The disturbance is an amplitude depending function. In our approach we therefore introduce the environmental amplitude limit. The limit defines the transition between the ordinary and the anomalous electromagnetic environment. That is dominated by electromagnetic emissions generated by a system in a failure mode. We set the probability of the disturbance for the ordinary environment to 1, but above this limit we use the probability of the electromagnetic phenomena caused by faults. If the susceptibility of the system is below this limit, then there is a systematic failure in the system which has to be fixed. However, if the susceptibility of the system is above this limit, the probability information of the anomalous environment will be used in further safety analysis. Based on an example of a power supply component, including a random hardware fold and a smart high side switch acting as victim to EMI, the probability of faults leading to higher electromagnetic emissions can be calculated as follows. The first step is to characterize all components integrated in an element with respect to their failure modes. Here we can reuse the information of the safety analysis of these components. This is followed by the selection of those failure modes which can contribute to higher electromagnetic disturbances. For example, in the power supply there are the following five fault modes caused by a random hardware fault foreseeable. Output stuck at high value, output stuck at low value, increased output value, decreased output value and the output is oscillating. In terms of generating additional emissions, only the last fault mode, the output is oscillating, is considered as a significant contributor to the electromagnetic environment. The amplitude of the disturbance can be characterized using one of the known EMC test methods. In case of the example, the generated emission is described by a DPI interference source. Since the oscillation fits best in terms of generated disturbances with a DPI test method. Nevertheless, Modeling the generated interference by DPI test method will always remain an approximation. In order to obtain the worst case amplitude values, the correction of the measured amplitude values using the measurement uncertainty must be taken into account. For sources with large emission span, the probability density can also be used directly. Otherwise, the emission can be simplified by convolving the distribution into one Dirac impulse with the probability of one with the highest amplitude. Considering the example, the fit rate of the element is given with two fit and the failure modes are uniformly distributed and the worst case amplitude is a sinusoidal signal with an amplitude of 26 dBm at 50 ohms. This results in an electromagnetic phenomenon 
with a fit rate for the oscillation of 0.4 fit and an amplitude of 26 dBm with the model of direct power injection. For further safety analysis, we use a fault tree. The fault tree is used to analyze the contribution of failure modes to the violation of a safety goal. The propagation of failures can be shown and reused for the probability calculation of a safety goal violation. We start the fault tree construction by adding all failure modes to the top gate. Electromagnetic disturbance can have direct or indirect influence on the safety goal. For the EMI initiator in the fault tree, we need more information than only an EMI event. Therefore, we assign to each initiator an EMI model. We concentrate thereby on existing models like the isopulse models based on the injection of transient disturbances or the injection of radio frequency disturbances based on the bulk current injection model or the direct power injection model. Additionally, we assign the susceptibility of the corresponding function to the initiator. Since more than one source of interference can exist, several interference models have to be used. Special for EMI is that, depending on the countermeasure, the past EMI initiator will not change the position in the fault tree, but will change the susceptibility level and therefore the failure rate. An additional EMI initiator has been added. Note, the two initiators are not independent from each other. This has an additional influence on the fit rate of the system. The countermeasure increases the susceptibility level of the function by 6 dB and therefore reduces the fit rate. The distinction between EMI as environment and fault condition helps to develop safety systems by preventing overengineering. We have shown that linking the topic functional safety with electromagnetic compatibility helps to develop systems that exploit the commonalities of both topics. The methods consist of the characterization of failures regarding their probability of generating high electromagnetic disturbances, the development of the fault tree for the victim including the EMI-based events, the implementation of safety measures and the calculation of the resulting failure rates. Thereby, the existing EMC test methods will remain unchanged and additional information regarding the EMC behavior can be included into functional safety analysis of the application. I'm Daniel, I hope you have enjoyed my presentation today, but anyway, thanks for watching.